Hello, dear classmates. Welcome to the last video of sequential ATPG. In this talk, we will discuss some issues about sequential ATPG, and then we will conclude this chapter. There are many issues about sequential ATPG. In this video, we will mainly focus on three problems. First. We will talk about circuits without initialization pins, and second, we will talk about potentially detected faults, and the third one is about a synchronous circuit. We will talk about these three problems in the following slides. For the first problem, a circuit without initialization input is very difficult for sequential ATPG. This picture shows an example in the Bushnell textbook. This is a simple modular free counter, which has two free flop. Suppose that the free flop is initially one zero, and then when we trigger the input count CNT, the circuit will come to the next state zero zero. And then when we trigger the CNT again, it will come to the third state zero one. And then it will return to the one zero state again. So basically, this is a modular three counter. Although this circuit is very simple, but it does not have an initialization pin. So it's hard for sequential ATPG to find an initialization test sequence. So this kind of circuit is very difficult to handle for sequential ATPG. And the second problem is about potentially detected fault. The definition of potentially detected fault is those fault that may or may not be detected. Actually, the potentially detected fault have been introduced in video 5.7 earlier. Now we show another example of potentially detected fault. Suppose we have a good circuit. The state transition equation can be written in this way. Where y1 and y2 are the next state equation, and、uh, z is the output equation. On the left hand side, we show the four free state transition graph of the four free circuit. On the right hand side, we show the forty circuit STG. Please know that. The forty circuit is missing the last turn here, so it does not have a zero zero to one zero transition. In this graph, on the left hand side of the slash is the input x, and the right hand side of the slash is the output z, and the numbers in the Circle represent y one and y two, which are the states. As we can see in this example, we can initialize this sequential circuit using zero one one sequence. Suppose that we are originally in zero zero when we power up. After we apply a zero. And the one, and the one, we would end up in state one one. No matter which state you are originally in, the circuit will be forced to state one one by this initialization sequence. And then, when we test the circuit by the sequence zero one one zero. We would obtain the output one zero zero one. 
as we can see starting from the state 1 1 when we apply a 0 we would obtain output 1 followed by another output 0 and another output 0 and the last output will be 1 so the good output sequence is 1 0 0 1 now let's have a look at the faulty circuit the 0 1 1 sequence may or may not initialize the circuit suppose that the circuit is originally in the 0 0 state when we apply 0 1 1 the faulty circuit is still trapped in the 0 0 state in this way when we test the circuit by the sequence 0 1 1 0 the output is always 0 so we can detect the fault however if we start at the state in the lower right connected component let's say we start from the 0 1 state then after applying the initialization sequence 0 1 1 we would end up in 1 1 when we apply the sequence 0 1 1 0 we still get the correct output 1 0 0 1 so the fault is not detected in summary the fault detection in this example is uncertain it is depending on the initial state of the circuit so we may or may not detect the fault the third example is a synchronous circuit a synchronous circuit does not have an explicit clock and the signals can change asynchronously so the timing is very difficult to handle for sequential ATPG on the left hand side we showed a combinational circuit with local feedback loop and the right hand side we show a combinational circuit with global feedback loop we can have raising condition or hazard which are very difficult to handle so sometimes we will need to verify our test sequence with four simulator so that the timing can be carefully handled now it's time for you to work on a quiz suppose you are a circuit designer which of the following circuits you should avoid in order to avoid difficult sequential ATPG please note that the answer can be more than one option A combinational circuit with feedback loop option B non-scan preflop without reset pin option C circuit with many different types of preflop option D circuit with SRAM memory now please pause the video and work on the quiz okay have you finished option A circuits with combinational feedback create memory which is very difficult for ATPG option B non-scan free flop without reset pin is particularly difficult because we may not find the initialization sequence if we want to know more details you can see video 11.8 for option C, circuit with many different types of free flop will not cause any problem. If we can insert DFT, that will not need sequential ATPG. Circuit with SRAM memory 
would need memory built-in self-test. So SVM memory will not cause any sequential ATPG. So the answer are A and B. Have you got them correctly? Now is the conclusion. In this chapter, we talk about sequential ATPG, which generate test pattern for the primary input, and uh, we observe the primary output. Please know that there is no scan DFT allowed in the circuit, so we cannot control the free flop or observe the free flop. The benefits of sequential ATPG is that we are able to perform a speed testing and we are able to handle partial scan or non-scan circuit. If you want to know more details, please see chapter 11, DFT chapter. The problems about sequential ATPG is that full coverage is low and runtime is long and we could need very large memory space. In this video, we introduce two techniques. One is time frame expansion, including the EBT and the back and the extended D algorithm, and etc. We also introduce a simulation based ATPG such as Contest. Finally, the current most popular ATPG and the DFT practice is that we use as much as combinational ATPG as possible. This is because combinational ATPG is fast and effective. And we only use sequential ATPG when it is absolutely necessary. So in conclusion, sequential ATPG is pretty difficult. So that's why we need DFT to make ATPG easier. Please see chapter 11 for more details about DFT. Thank you for watching this chapter.